What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Fantasy Six Pack News Cycle. I'm your host, Dylan Clemens, here with me, as he is always, is my good buddy, Michael Plan. What's going on, man? Not much, not much. Just enjoying you talk really fast because you want to go through this really, really fast. But... <laughs> I'm let's, ready to let's, go, let's... though, man. I'm excited. Uh, free agent. Well, it's free agency starts tomorrow. We're recording this Tuesday night. Um, but uh, the legal the tampering, tampering, I know that's yeah. an oxy- oxymoron, but it's whatever you it's want to call tampering. it, it's, it, it's going on. So um, we're going to run you through some of the, the fantasy guys that got signed so far. Um, but before we do, please uh, smash that like button. Please subscribe to the Fantasy Six Pack YouTube channel if you don't already. And head on over to fantasysixpack.net slash plans and check out our memberships we got going on over there, guys. We're still talking football all the time over there in our Discord. Um, that's the big part of it. You get access to our award-winning rankings. We have the best ranker in all fantasy baseball from last season on our staff, Keith Lott, guys. So if you're into fantasy baseball, make sure you uh, head on over there and check out all our stuff we got going on. Um, but, Mike, what do you say we talk about some of the free agent signings? Oh, yeah, and some trades here. Because um, I know you got a trade here that you're, yeah. you're just dying to it- talk about. It was a little quiet on the fantasy football front yesterday for free agency when it first kicked off. But we started getting some more noise today. Um, But yesterday, the biggest thing was Jimmy Garoppolo going to the Las Vegas Raiders, Mike. And we know that Garoppolo's not really a fantasy asset. It's just him. But what I want to ask you is, what do you think about him in this offense with Jacoby Myers going there, signing a three-year, $33 million deal, and... Darren Waller departing now and going to the Giants. We'll get to that in a little bit. But what does this offense look like with Jimmy G at the helm? The same? Uh, maybe worse? Uh, I mean, it really is not much of a an upward move. It's more lateral, uh, getting Jimmy G. I don't know if it's really the answer to the franchise. I mean, they still got the number seven pick here. They could still go for that quarterback, which it wouldn't surprise me if they do have Jimmy G, you know, kind of be that leader. Um, but fantasy purposes for this offense, honestly, it doesn't do a whole lot. Um, biggest thing is, and I know we're going to talk about it here, you know, I'm not kind of just kind of, you know, segment this into our next one, but uh, Jacoby Myers signing with the Raiders, the three years, 33 mil. Yep. I mean, this is honestly a little bit bigger news in my opinion than Jimmy G going to the Raiders. Yes. It's nice having a quarterback in the Raiders, you know, because we, we got Devonte Adams. We, we had Darren Waller keyword had, um, you know, to support, we got Hunter Renfro to support as well. And then we also got, uh, Oh man, Mac Collins, who who had a couple He's flashes. Free agent. They they might, I mean, they might re-sign they him. Might, but, yeah. uh, but if if they do, uh, I mean, it's just going to clutter things up more. So th- the biggest thing here is this Devonte. I mean. Yes, this is he's the biggest winner here. I mean, yes, Jacoby Myers comes in, he's probably going to take some targets away, but Devontae's still your top five guy that you're going to expect him to be. Like I said, this is a lateral move. Um, Derek Carr, Jimmy G, they're going to hyper target whoever their number one guy is. I mean, hmm. that surprises me that you still think Devontae Adams is a top five wide receiver with Garoppolo. I think Absolutely. he uh, he takes, I think he drops a tier, to be honest with you. I personally don't think Garoppolo is the same. As Derek Carr, both I think QB it's, twos. I think, I think it's a drop down. Yeah, um, but I don't. I, don't I think love. the offense is uh, it, it's good enough. I mean, it's not you know Kyle Shanahan, but I mean, yeah, McDaniel still has a decent offense. I where personally, he can make I don't. Devonte Adams isn't a first round pick to me anymore. He's probably an end of the second round. Give me, give me. You're Give still all in him on the end of the first round. I mean, I'll take I'll take him on the end of the first round, um, especially the way it's trending now. I mean, like you said, I mean, the wide receivers are kind of become a little bit more mm-hmm. uh, valuable nowadays because of their ability to stay on the field. Running backs just don't stay healthy for a full season, where wide receivers have a much better chance. So I mean, you're going to see a big trend this year of wide, a lot more wide receivers taking yep. in the first round. So I mean, it, it wouldn't surprise me if Devontae Adams is one of those back end ones. Sure. Um, just real quick, do you think Jacoby Myers is a top 24 guy here? Uh, not top 24. Um, past two years, uh, last year he finished wide receiver 29. The year before that, wide receiver 33. I mean, so 
you know, the year that he was wide receiver 33, he actually had 126 targets and he played all 17 games. Last year, he only played 14 nice. games, got 96 targets, but he, he got was the only guy. last year too. Yes, Finally. but he was, <laughs> the, he was pretty much the only guy other than like Hunter Henry, mm-hmm. you know, flashes of Taekwon Thornton uh, up in New England. So, I mean, it's, Again, it's it's kind of a lateral move. He's not a wide receiver two. He's he's kind yeah. of like that middle of the pack wide receiver type three, yep. where he's going to have flashes from weeks to weeks, week to week. But it's going to be hard to kind of you know determine what week that's going to be. Sure. What's nice about him too is that he knows the offense. Josh McDaniels was obviously yes. his offensive coordinator. He also knows the defense very well because he threw that ball to Chandler, <laughs> <Jones>. <laughs> to Chandler Jones for that touchdown to help him win. Yeah, that's the, fantastic. The year. And then the last part of this, like I said at the top, Darrell Waller traded the Giants for the third round pick. What? Well, for me, I'm ecstatic for him as a fantasy asset now. I'm curious of your thoughts. Can he get back into the top three tight end conversation, which he was in the beginning of not this past season, but the season before? I mean, to be completely fair, I don't think it was the offense that really killed Darren Waller's value. It was his ability to not stay on the field. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, in 21, I mean, he, he finished as a tight end 10. I mean, uh, his biggest year was 2020 where he finished as a tight end two, but last year because of the injuries, he finished as a uh, tight end 31. Yeah. He's but really, he's that good year. And in, in 2021, he still had injuries, you know, but he finished as a tight end 10. He played at least 11 games. Now that was the year where they didn't have Devonte Adams yet. He was getting hyper targeted by uh, Derek Carr, which I mean, He's going over to the Giants where they have Richie James. Uh, I think they're going to re-sign Sterling Shepard, I heard. Um, so, I mean, Darren Waller instantly becomes the number one target. Uh, Saquon Barkley led this team in targets last yeah. year. Uh, it's it's going to be Darren Waller this year. Mm-hmm. He's going to lead. The, he's, he's, he's lock him in for 120, 125 targets. Yeah. Um, it's just a matter of how this offense looks with him and how many scoring opportunities he gets is really going to pop that ceiling into, into that tight end three. But it, mark my words, if he plays at least 11 games and he's healthy, he's at least a tight end 10 for you. And we know that he's going to be the red zone threat most likely to in the passing game. Cause you do have Wondell Robinson there, but he's a small, shorter slot guy, you know, they're, they're yeah. not looking for him in the red zone. And then may, who knows, they probably do draft somebody in the draft, but I'm, I still love Love, love this for Waller. Um, jumping it's over all about next, health. Yep, yep. Jumping over the next bit of news, Mike, and this one hits a little close to home to me, being a Bears fan. David Montgomery departs and goes to the Lions. Three years, $18 million. But before we get into Monty, man, I mean, you could tie it all together here. What does this do to Swift? He's just – he's destined to be a third down back, I guess. He's just going to catch the passes out of the backfield. He's never going to be that guy. That's That's, well, that's it. I mean, they they basically it, this is the sign they're not going to be re-signing Jamal Williams, which kind of sucks for yep. Lions fans because he was kind of a, a locker room guy. But let's be honest, David Montgomery is an upgrade from Jamal Williams. Uh, Jamal Williams was really only kind of a, a run stuff and in between the tackles kind of guy who didn't really catch the ball. Montgomery's going to come in here and he's actually going to eat into DeAndre Swift's passing value more than you think he's going to. He may not be the third down back. Swift. He's a good pass catcher, man. He is. He's a great pass catcher, but De- uh, Montgomery is too. I mean, yeah, no, I know that's what I was saying. He's a good that, pass catcher too. Yeah. Uh, that my bad, but You're that's good. that's the whole thing is where Swift may not be the dedicated third down back here. This may be a true 50-50 committee because we have seen uh, Dan Campbell like to switch in the backs here and there. I mean, I think Dan Campbell's just betting on DeAndre Swift to stay healthy. And if not, he's got somebody like Montgomery he can hand the reins to, you know, if, you know, if Swift's down for a couple weeks. So fantasy wise, they're going to eat into each other if they're both healthy. Yeah. But they are very well might be able to replicate what Jamal Williams and Swift did this year. I was going to say, I love the touchdown upside for Montgomery now. Yes. They could both be flex relevant. All right. But. What I'm scared of is just the eating into the PPR value because that's what Swift really made his hay on last year because Jamal Williams was getting all the touchdowns. Now, mm-hmm. if that kind of turns you know Montgomery's way this year 
and he gets all the touchdowns and he's taking more uh, targets away from Swift. Swift is really going to be the big loser here. I mean, Montgomery got a, I mean, so it's only a $6 million a year contract for three years. So I, I really do think Montgomery is going to be a really solid handcuff slash flex next year. In this yeah. I th- yeah. If you go zero RB and he ends up being your RB two, I think you're okay with that. You know, it's it, yeah, he's, he's going to be fine. And like I said, he's got double digit touchdown upside. Like we saw from Jamal Williams. Yep. I think he had 16 or something. This like offense year. is going to take so a step forward next nice. year. They're good. They're good. Um, but moving on, man, this one, a little bit lighter news for running backs, but he's going to a good team, man. Rashad Penny, mm-hmm. who can't seem to stay healthy, but he's going to the Eagles. And do you see him, Mike, just sliding into that Miles Sanders role who saw, I want to say, like 1,200 rushing yards last season? Double-digit touchdowns as well? So I'm going to keep this analysis quick, just like he kept it quick uh, in 2021 when he led people to championships, only, you know, really doing well for three games. In that three-game stretch, he did average 26.2 points. Yeah. That, that is pretty good numbers. So, but his biggest thing, biggest thing is, is, I mean, going into this year after seeing what he did in 21, all right, let's see what he can do now that he's healthy. Week one, he gets injured. Breaks his leg. It's crazy. Uh, it's, so this really is a true case. And now we can't predict injuries. You know, I never am mm-hmm. going to root for somebody to get a, some guy to get injured. If Penny can stay healthy, this guy is a locked in RB one with the way this offense runs, the way the, the touchdown opportunity is there. And we've seen the explosive ability. He can uh, rip off a run. So if he can stay healthy, he's a locked in RB one, but do you think he can stay healthy? That's the thing. The yeah, track record, it says he, he does it. So, I mean, that's really going to be a, a big hit in his draft value. All right. You know, if he's if he's going in that, you know, third, fourth round, I'm sorry, that's a little too rich for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. A little too rich for me. I'll be but drafting him in, the him in the fifth, sixth, sixth round. Yeah. The fifth, it, sixth around that range. If I'll, you can I'll get him around that range. Yeah, like where Miles Sanders was kind of going this year. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he kind of was going in that RB, late RBs, you know, zero range in where no one really zone. knew he what he was going to be stay at the dead zone. Yeah. Nobody really knew what he was going to be, but I mean, it could turn, it could turn in his favor if he can stay healthy, but here's the thing. Eagles resigned Boston Scott. So, I mean, Any game there, are, was there, man. Yeah, yeah so they're, they're, the already, same stuff. they're prepared for it again. And it's going to be the same offense. Yep. Yep. And then the last bit of big news guys, if you want to call it big news, cause this is kind of the first piece of the puzzle. Maybe Aaron Rodgers going to the Jets. I'm not going to – we're not going to specify yet. But Alan Lazard signs a four-year, $44 million deal with the Jets. Mike, what does this do to Garrett Wilson, I think, is what we're worried about the most? Because we did like Alan Lazard as a wide receiver three in a pinch as a flex play. But we really, really like Garrett Wilson as maybe – a borderline wide receiver one, probably wide receiver two. But now what is with Alan Lazard being added to this offense? What does it do? First off, let me say, you know, Alan Lazard's a decent wide receiver. Don't get me wrong. He's not worth the 11 mil a year. Uh, I mean, he's getting paid as a wide receiver two in that offense, but this does tell me this. It's clear. Robert Sala does not like Elijah Moore. All right, because if they just signed Alan uh, Lazard to this contract, one, obviously, like you said, domino for Aaron Rodgers, but two, Alan Lazard's going to be, one, eating into Garrett Wilson's targets a little bit. Now, Garrett Wilson's, he is a talented wide receiver on his own, Mm -hmm. so he's going to command those targets. But Elijah Moore, somebody who was forgotten about last year, is, you know, pretty much, he's gone in the wind. Actually, so much so, I wouldn't be surprised if he's included in a trade to Green Bay Bingo. when they yep. trade Aaron Rodgers because they just got Al Mazar. There's reports for Randall Cobb going to the Jets as well. Um, a whole other, you know, laundry list of what Aaron Rodgers wants, and I just, it's it's kind of too much, you know. But if the Jets want to do it, Jets want to do it. Yeah. Um, biggest hit here is Garrett Wilson, though. He finished his wide receiver 21 last year. He averaged 12.7 fantasy points a game with inconsistent QB play. Yeah, I was going to say that, that that's being nice, Spike. At times, it was awful QB play. 
but you know as well as I do, Aaron Rodgers throws to the wide receivers he trusts. Yeah, and no. this is the reasons he's at, asking for Alan Lazar and Randall Cobb. And if, if Randall Cobb comes, that's the biggest hit I think that Garrett Wilson will take. Alan Lazard is a hit that Garrett Wilson can take and, and still back, uh, come back and at least be a solid upside wide receiver three. You know, maybe a low side wi wide receiver. Yeah, receiver. he can he can be around twenty one. But if to Randall Cobb comes sure. in there, then I'm really worried about the consistency. Because Garrett Wilson is really good, but he's not Devontae Adams. He's not going to get 150 targets. Agreed. 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 But yeah, and then just to tidy some other things, we got both running backs back in Miami, Raheem Moster, Jeff Wilson. It Same is what it stuff. is. Yeah, pick, flip a coin, pick one, whichever you want. And then Taylor Heineke goes to Atlanta. Jeff Wilson for me. To be, I agree, Mike. And then uh, Taylor Heineke goes to Atlanta to be the backup, they say, but I'm going to predict that he's Hometown kid. quarterback. Yeah, and, uh, that was the main reason. Five. He's from Atlanta, so. Cool. But, yeah, guys, that wraps it up for this edition of the Fantasy Six-Pack News Cycle. I'm sure you'll be hearing from us again here pretty soon. Once you hear the Aaron Rodgers news, we'll come back, talk a little bit more about the Jets. Or well, if he happens to. to stay in Green Bay, <laughs> or if he happens to retire. If he um, retires, man, this is just a big <laughs> that, would, that would be something. That would be something. But That would be that would be like a Dexter-level ending. Like, yeah. you put up all this hype, and you're just going to retire. Psh, yeah. Terrible ending. Yep. Agreed. Um. Yeah, but while you're waiting for the rest of the free agency news to break, uh, hit smash that like button. Please subscribe and subscribe and head on over to facesexpect.net slash plans and check out our memberships that we got going on over there. But until then, guys. Number one and 22. Uh, yep. For Mike, I'm Dylan. We'll talk to you next time.